the front door of the Sam Bavariar mansion in Kadampa that evening witnessed an undiscovered wonder. Crowds of people stood as far as the eye could see. Men, women, boys, girls and old people were present in the gathering. Old men and women who could not stand firmly stood on their legs. Heedless of being tossed around by others, they staggered to see the heroic face of Aditha Kari Kaler. Boys and girls were struggling to get ahead, oblivious to the fact that they were being crushed by the crowd. The young women completely abandoned their natural shyness and struggled to come forward through the crowd of foreign men. The young men did not idealize such young women at all, not even casting a glance at them, but focused on getting a good view of the prince. Many of them were climbing the trees in front and on the sides of the Kadampur mansion. Many more tried to climb the outer wall of the palace and were dragged down by the palace guards. Many young women with green babies on their hips stood in the crowd experiencing many hardships. Their mothers said to the crying children, Darling! Don't cry! Aditha Kari Kala Chola, the Veerapandian-headed Mahavarati warrior of Tamil Nadu is coming. If you get the chance to see him, you too will become a hero like him one day. They tried to convince him. This is what lovers used to say to their sweethearts, mothers to their sons, about Aditha Kari Kalar. In that way, Aditha Kari Kalar's heroic fame spread throughout the country at that time. Who could not be interested in seeing the prince who entered the battlefield in the twelfth Braya and cut down many of the enemy with a knife in his hand, who routed the Pandian army in the Sever battlefield and made him flee to the Virapandian desert and hide in a rock cave, and who in the 19th Braya dismembered the relief force of Virapandian and found his hiding place and beheaded him. For the past three to four years, many rumors circulated about such a heroic man. Some people said that after Aditha Karakalar's coronation as Yuvaraja, Emperor Sundara Chola had a heartbreak and the Emperor did not want Aditha Karakalar to succeed him. Some people said that Aditha Karakalar also wants to establish a separate kingdom in Kanchi, just as he established a separate kingdom in Kanchi and started the Palavar Parangulam. Some others said that Aditha Karakalar was angry because Chakraborty showed too much love to his younger brother Arulmas Hivarman. Some others rejected this outright and concluded that there could not be any sinful brothers like Kari Kalan and Arul Mazai. Many people talked about the fact that the prince was still unmarried. Some said that the reason for the rift between father and son was that the Kari Kalars refused to marry any of the royal family members and wanted to marry the daughter of the temple patron and ascend to the throne. Some people said that Aditya Kari Kalar was paranoid and that the Pandya sorcerers had driven him mad with witchcraft and that is why the princes did not want him to ascend the Chola throne after the emperor. In any case, the people were eager to see the great hero. Ever since the news spread that Prince Kari Kalar was going to visit the Kadampur palace, there was great agitation in the neighborhood. After knowing that he was going to come that evening, people from all the towns within a distance of two years gathered in the neighborhood. It was more appropriate to call that gathering a sea of people. The voices of thousands of people from across the continents became a single indistinct noise and sounded like the chant of the ocean. In front of the front door of the palace, the palace guards made way for the prince and his entourage. The scene of the people in front pushing and blocking the way as the people behind came and collided with them, and when they were pushed back again by the guards, was similar to the waves crashing on the seashore and retreating. Someone on top of the tree suddenly said, There they come. He shouted. Where? Where? A thousand voices rose up. A horse came at full speed. The crowd flowed in with little regard for the crowd. The people pressed on both sides and moved and gave way so as not to get caught under the feet of the horse. Young Sam Bavarian. They shouted. Yes, the one who came is Kanamaran. Without answering the questions asked by the people in the crowd, Kanamaran quickly drove his horse and stopped near the gate of the castle and jumped down. Seeing Sam Bavariyar and Palyavatariyar who were standing there, he bowed down and said, The prince is coming, but his will is not so calm. He suddenly gets angry. I have come to take precautions. We should welcome the king in a good manner. It is better not to answer even if he speaks something strange. He said. After saying this, he did not stand there and looked up. 
he saw that the ladies of the palace were waiting on the upper floor of the front gate tower. He immediately entered the castle gate and went up through the wooden steps on one side. When he reached the place where the women were, Kanamaran's eyes searched for Nandini Devi's place regardless of others. Approaching her, she said, Devi. I have fulfilled their wish. I have brought the prince, and he is coming. But he is like a religious elephant. I don't know how we are going to deal with him. He said. Sir. What's the matter with that? They have their sister's two-eyed Ancus to subdue the religious elephant. Said Nandini. Manamegali said, Sister. What is this talk? She said. Kanamaran said, Manamegali. There is nothing wrong in what the Queen of Palvur is saying. Shouldn't you do penance to get a brave warrior like Aditha Kari Kalar? He said. Before Manamegala could answer, Nandini interrupted, Sir. Is anyone else coming with the prince? She asked. Yes, yes. Parthapendra Pallava and Vandiyathava are coming. Nandini looked specifically at Manamekali and said which Vandiyathavan? You said he was their friend, right? She said. Yes, it was that great friend who saw me stabbed to death from behind. He sprang from somewhere, somehow, and joined us on the river bank. I looked for the prince's vision, otherwise I would have made him a prey to my knife there. He said. Manamegali's face shrunk and her brows furrowed. Brother. If it's true that he stabbed you in the back, why let him into this mansion? She said. Darling. Don't you talk. That's all men's business. Yesterday they would fight, today they will fight. Said Nandini. Gandamaran smiled and said, it's nothing like that. I had to look at the prince's face. Oh. You bring baskets of flowers. The rain of flowers you shower from here will calm the prince's anger and calm him down. There they are. I'm going down. After saying that, Machu went down the steps to let go. As seen from the loft of the front door, in the middle of the sea of people as far as the eye could see, it appeared somewhere like a whirlpool caused by a whirlwind. Sometimes three horses and their mounted soldiers appeared like a ship caught in the midst of the whirlwind. The next moment they were covered by the waves of the sea of people. The vortex thus created was traveling further and closer to the front door of the fort. At last, he reached the fort gate. Arriving at the gate of the fort, Aditha Kari Kalar and Parthapendra, who were mounted on three horses, came to Vandiyathevan. All the elephant and horse entourages that followed them were stopped far behind by the great sea of people. The horses came and halted at the gate of the mansion, and there was a great shout. Hearing the great shout that arose from twenty parikas, two hundred horns, three hundred strings, and five hundred tampatas, the roar of the great sea of people was also contained. The din of the instruments rang out for a while and then suddenly subsided. In the silence that ensued, Kei Shang Chuan stood on a platform near the dais and shouted in a thunderous voice. His sons are Arun Jayadeva, the heroic warrior who defeated the forces of Khan Aradevan of the two regions, his sons are Parin Takasundara Chola Emperor who rules under the shadow of an umbrella from Elam to Seat Bulai country, his eldest son, Kapura son, Vedatisa Matanda Nayak, Yuvaraja Emperor, Aditha with Virabandian head. Karikala has visited Chola. Barak. Barak. When Akatayang had finished speaking, it seemed as if the rain and thunder had stopped. Immediately another K. Shangaran near him Koli Mountain King, Valval Ori, the hero who killed lion, bear, deer, and boar with a single arrow, Rajati Raja Rajamart Handa Vira Kampira Sambuvarayan who appeared in his lineage, forever companion of the Chola Emperor clan, guard of Viranarayana Lake, the hero of five thousand soldiers, his small copper Makanar Aditha Karikala greets the Chola in the palace with a hearty voice. May the arrival of the Chola clan be welcome. He shouted. When he finished saying that in a thunderous voice, flowers rained down from the upper floor. Aditha Karikalan and Vandiyathevan looked on. Amidst the beautiful faces of the many women present, 
Vandiyathevan saw only Manamekali's face with a blooming smile. Vandiyathevan also smiled for a moment. He immediately looked in another direction as if he realized how wrong his action was. At the same time, the face of Aditha Karikalan, looking up, became more stern than before, he jumped down from his horse. The other two dismounted. By this time, the chanting of the instruments had started again. The clamor of the sea of people, which had been subdued for a while, erupted again. The guests and those standing at the gate to welcome them entered the castle gate. Immediately the gates of the fort were slammed. Aditha Karigalan looked back and asked, Why are they slamming the door in such haste? Are they going to imprison me here like they imprison my father in Tanjore Fort? What will happen to the retinue that came with me? He asked. The two old men stood stunned for a moment. Palyavetare was the first to overcome and said, Komaka. The loving hearts of the locks of people in this Chola empire have imprisoned themselves and their fathers, why should they be imprisoned alone? Said. Prince. What will happen if a large number of people who have come for their darshan enter this small hut? When they stand outside, all the neighboring groves have become like a forest destroyed by monkeys. When the crowd disperses, we bring in the retinues that came with them. Until then, there are many servants here to do their work. Said Sambuvarayar. At this moment, the crowd's cheering was heard at the outer gate of the fort. Kari Kalan asked Kanamaran, where is the way to go to the front door loft? He asked. When Kanamaran pointed to the place where the stairs were, Kari Kalan walked towards that side to get away, accompanied by Kanamaran, Vandiyathevan, and Parthapendran. Sambuvarayar looked at Palyavatarayar and said, What is this? Did you buy Saturn as he was passing by? Doesn't his brain seem to be right? We interfered in this matter after listening to the little children said. What bad thing is going to happen like that? If something happens, let it happen, if it doesn't happen, let it go, said Palyavetarayar. I'm not talking about the matter. Shouldn't something naughty happen in our house? The reason is not right. He's like a religious elephant. You see the grimace on the face and the poison on the tongue, don't you? One must grit one's teeth and be patient for a few days. That Pallava Parthapendra would have helped to keep him under control. There's another wretched boy behind me, and he's the one I don't like. I even doubt he's the only one. Wasn't he here even the day we had the meeting before? Yesterday evening outside this fort. He was also the one who stood under the cover of the tree. Isn't he my son's friend? So there is no fear of him. Now why are they hurrying to where the women are? Shall we go too? At this time, Parthibendra, who had gone as far as Machu Petty, returned and approached the place where the two great Kurunila kings were talking. Sambuvarayar's last words fell on his ears. Sir! Whatever other doubts you may have about the prince, you don't have to have doubts about women. He doesn't even look at women. He said. Palyavatarayar smiled. Then how will the purpose of our calling him here be fulfilled? He asked. It depends on the fortunes of Lady Sambuvarayar and the fortunes of the Chola Empire. Parthapendra. Let alone Manamegali's luck. Why does the prince come with such a stern face on his arrival? Why does he speak so venomously? It seems that you should somehow take him away peacefully from here. Said Sambuvarayar. The prince came all the way to Velarangkare smooth and cheerful. Then this Vandiyadeva and a Vaishnava came along. They must have said something. Since then the prince's character has changed. We thought so too. What can we do now? Has that poor boy come with you? You have a little patience, I have arranged everything. I also have a quarrel with that boy. I will settle it in time, said Parthapendran. When Carrie Gallon and the other two went to the front door loft, the women there were returning and coming down the steps. Carrie Kalan looked at Kandamaran and said, Friend, shall we make all the mothers come and wait for us here? That would be great. Shouldn't we go where they are and offer our obeisance? After saying that, 
he bowed to the ladies and stood out of the way. When he got down one by one, he asked Kanamaran who was who. When he saw Nandini, he said, Oh! Isn't it the youngest grandmother of Palvur? Are they really here? So happy! He said. Nandini looked at him with her sharp eyes without saying anything and left. Karakalan's body trembled slightly due to Apervei's vision. The next moment he managed to look at Manamekali who came behind him and said, Oko. She must be your sister Manamekali. She looks like the Gandharva maiden in the picture. After all the girls had gone, Karakalan went to the front of the upper floor and stood. At the gate, the crowd, which had just then begun to disperse, broke out again. People started coming back to the Fort Vasaland. Carrie Gallen noticed Kay Shang Kowan standing on a platform standing alone near the top floor. He signaled him to come near. On his arrival he told the people to announce some things. Kay Shang Kowan went back and hummed the pair a few times. Then he asked the people not to speak by signal. After repeating some of Aditha Karakalar's awards, he said, such a collar Kalak Gamakanar will stay in this Kadampur mansion for a week and ten days. He will visit all the surrounding towns. Then he will meet the people of the respective towns and hear and know all their grievances. He shouted. That's it. So far there was such a great uproar that the uproar in the crowd was silenced. The voices of cheers, greetings and applause rose up and went far around the circle, drowning out the sound of the flood of water that flowed through the seventy-four gushes from the Viranarayana lake. Sambhuvarayar, Palyavatarayar and Parthapendra were standing where they had stood in front of them. When Aditha Karikalan approached the place where they were standing, he said, Parthapendra. Why are you standing here? Have you also started plotting with these old men? He asked. Both the elders looked at Karakalan's face in shock. A smile crept across his face. Sambhuvarayar managed a little and said, Come again. Earlier you called it prison, now you call it conspiracy. I promise you that no nuclear harm will come to you while you stay as guests in this hut. Before that happens, life will leave my body. Said. Sir. Did you think I feared harm? I never feared harm when I was in the midst of a hundred thousand Pandian foes. I fear when I am among my dear friends. But do not call this house of yours a mere hut, aha. How high are the walls around it? How heavy? Isn't Tanjavur Fort bigger than Mathal? For which enemies have you built such a lavish fort? Said Kari Gallen. Prince. We have no separate enemies. The enemies of the Chola clan are our enemies, the friends of the Chola clan are our friends too. Your promise makes me very happy. Tell this to your son Kanamaran. Kanamaran, who is my friend, considers the prince of the monkey clan as his enemy. Isn't this a big mistake? When Aditha Karikalan said that, Kanamaran bowed his head.